In 1918, a division of U.S. troops found themselves caught behind German lines. They were trapped, helpless, and unable to call for backup. The only thing that could save them was a bird. Cher Ami, a carrier pigeon, became remembered as a hero of World War I. I'm Jake Storielli, talking about my bird. Welcome back to Laughs from the Past. This is an episode of Little Laughs. It doesn't fit our main storyline. It's a quick hitter, random. This is coming to you live from the Roosevelt Studio, R-S-V-L-T-S. Jake, fantastic intro. One of your better voices. Uh, The ending was really good. Talking about your bird. Yeah. I like it. Producer Luke said this is a quick one, so let's just... Let's do it. Let's get into it. And hope it's quick, because someone near my microphone just farted. Damn. Many of us have heard the Lost Battalion and know some of the story. What is not commonly known is the role of a remarkable pigeon named Cher Ami. Cher, I thought you said Jeremy in the opening. Sure. Cher Ami. That little bird became one of the greatest heroes of World War I. I high alert, doubt it. No. Doubt it. I think a lot of a lot of soldiers are probably like, Let's ah, see how many lives were saved. Ah. Let's see how many lives were saved. Share a me. There's humans that owed their life and their families' lives. Maybe. Share, bird. share a me was one of almost 600 carrier pigeons employed by the U.S. Army Signal Corps Corps during the First World War. Carrier pigeons were invaluable. In spite of the advances in communications technology during the war, radios were not as reliable since they were large and still bound by delicate wires. It also was not always possible to lay new wires quickly and often could be extremely dangerous. While not necessarily a popular form of communication, pigeons did provide a reliable one. The average homing pigeon can fly approximately 50 miles per hour, making them a quick method of communication. Still, these pigeons often proved popular targets to to enemy gunfire despite their speed. In fact, German machine gunners trained diligently to both spot and kill these birds with their deadly MG-08s, which could fire over 500 rounds per minute. Pigeons could also be a very risky way to communicate, because if a pigeon was shot down, the message could easily be intercepted by enemy forces. So right away, if I'm the U.S., I'm sending so many fake pigeons. Yeah. They're firing Thousands of rounds into the sky. Yeah. Maybe killing a bird and the note just says like, ha. I think you def- now we know where you are. You definitely have code words. How are you gonna make a fake pigeon? No, it's just not <laughs> real <laughs> just not carrying a real yeah. message. I think you definitely have some easy code. It's like it's giving signs in baseball. It's you could give all the signs in the world, but if it doesn't say the word no indicator. Arugula no indicator. in there, then the message doesn't matter at all. Mm-hmm. So you are throwing funny birds, and it, like sometimes you receive them, and you're like, okay, stop sending fucking fake birds. Don't give a shit. Just send a bird over where you think the Germans are, um, and then they start firing, and then you're like, that's where they are. But yeah, I man, I think in the same way, if someone from 1911 saw how cell phones work, okay, it'd be a step below this, but watching a carrier pigeon in action would blow my mind. Well, just think of a pigeon flying, and there you go. Not the actual act of it, the completion of the act. Yeah, I'm with Jake. I still don't understand it. Are they flying to, like, a headquarters? Do they know, like, a building that they're delivering a message to? Or are they just flying in a direction? They we did this on them? JJR once because this guy had pigeon races, and they, we, you have to teach them. Um, like, I, I don't know how you do it. I'm, okay, so... Using my brain before Googling it would be that they have two bases and they just go base to base. Because that kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. Because how could you tell it if there was three? I have no idea how you tell the pigeon to go there instead of there. Yeah. But the pigeons are moving with the army. Messenger pigeons only work in one direction. 
they always fly home. So to send a message, you first send the pigeon, perhaps by train, to the other person. When they feel the need to send you an urgent message, they attach the message to the pigeon and let it go. Oh, so there's a pigeon. So place. they always know where home is. That's that's sweet. That's insane. That's insane. That's wow. insane that pigeons were one way. So you guys could Jake both barely have your, knows how where his home is. You can both have uh, your own pigeon that you trade back and forth, but after you get the message, you need to send it back on train to the other person. Yeah, or take it back. with you, which I'm guessing that's what they do is share on me. Uh, it was during the Meuse Argonne Offensive of 1918 where the carrier pigeon was finally recognized for valiant efforts. On October 2nd, 1918, American soldiers from the 77th, 77th Division pushed too far into the Argonne Forest and became trapped behind German lines on the slopes of a hill. You're about to eat a bug. Cut off from reinforcements and supplies, roughly 550 men from the 306th 307th and 308th regiments under made Major Charles Whitlessey held their ground against a far larger German force for several days. Far beyond radio range, the only way the Americans could communicate with their own lines was via carrier pigeon. However, it did not take long to realize that the skies were as dangerous as the ground. Trapped in a horrible meat grinder of machine guns and rain, the Lost Battalion held their ground against vicious German attacks. So I get it. If a battalion goes on a mission, you just bring a pigeon with you, and then if you right. if you're then you let it go and it'll fly back to the base. Yeah, it's like okay. a backup plan. Yeah, yeah. On October fourth, American heavy artillery or artillery started to bombard the Lost Battalion's position on accident. Oh come on, guys! Yeah, killing thirty men as they held the line. Major Whitlessy. For some reason, that doesn't sound like Whitley sounds good. Whitsey, Whittlesey? Whittlesey? Whittlesey. Major Whittlesey and his men watched as bird after bird fell out of the sky, torn apart by German fire. So they brought a bunch of birds with them. You bring a few birds with you. With supplies running out and casualties mounting rapidly, Major Whit- Whittlesey desperately sent out his last pigeon, Cher Ami. Cher Ami. How, what were the other pigeons' names? How did they tell the pigeons apart? Did each did each battalion just have like a pigeon weirdo? Like uh, he wasn't a warrior, just some skinny kid like cuckooing with the I pigeons. I mean, I think you're forgetting, you know, the down times of war. Like yeah. if you have three birds that are part of your battalion, you're gonna learn those are birds. You thinking it's, I'm thinking it's like twenty here. Could be I don't know how many birds you're transporting. I know, but they were like you know, watching bird after bird fall out of the sky. They said six hundred employed for the whole war. Okay. Right, so, so we've got three here? battalions here. I mean, maybe three three birds each. I'd say ten max. Ten max. Okay. per battalion. So what were the other names? Interested. That I had a lot. Why did the American bird get named Cher Ami? Yeah. All right. So Cher Ami had a note um, that he took to the American lines. The note simply read, "We are along the road parallel to two seventy six point four." Our own artillery is dropping a barrage directly on us. For heaven's sake, stop it. Good ending. Good close. With fire raining down on them from all sides, Cher Ami was now the last chance for the last battalion to walk off that hill alive. The brave bird Mm. flew straight into the German fire, dodging bullets as he went. However, his luck did not last long. Cher Ami was hit in the chest soon after takeoff as American soldiers watched in horror as their last hope hit the ground. Against all odds, though, Cher Ami got up again, wounded but still alive. The little bird took flight, charging head-on into wave after wave of gunfire. By the end of the trip, he covered 25 miles in roughly half an hour. He arrived at base heavily wounded but alive. Army medics were able to save Cher Ami's life but his right leg was barely attached to his body and he was blind in one eye. However, because of Cher Ami's delivery, the artillery artillery stopped and took up new firing coordinates away from the American lines. The next day, shells started to fall on German positions, relieving pressure on the bloodied 77th, and the battle turned in America's favor. On October 8th, 
194 men made it back to American lines thanks to Cher Ami's sacrifice. I have a funny scene in my head where the people who were doing the shooting, the Americans, there was like some argument like, dude, I think you're hitting, I think you're going too far. You're hitting ourselves. And the other guy was like, no, this is where the Germans are. Mm. But they can't see where they're landing. Right. And they're like, no, dude, like you're hitting yourselves. And finally fucking pigeon comes and it's like for heaven's sake stop shooting us and yeah. dude's like i fucking told okay. you and the pigeon like saves the day for him i need the other you. dude just like so sad that a pigeon i think outed him. i think you're gonna be offended yeah and i i think even the way you said it right there you gotta get over the pigeon part because this is a hero 194 lives got shot yeah i mean lost an eye not, lost not, a leg not necessary if that one dude isn't just shooting down his own country i mean they're still surrounded yeah like they would have run out of supplies and everything yeah so yes necessary pigeon's a hero i didn't doubt that it's a hero i doubted that it said like didn't it say it was like the biggest hero one of the greatest heroes of world war one I. I think they're i think i don't know if it's cracking if top i 10. told you if i told you a human escaped somewhere Got shot in the chest, lost their leg, lost an eye, and then saved almost 200 American lives. What would you say about them? You'd say they're one of the biggest heroes of the war. Yeah. That's a fair argument. It's a fair argument. I just, I gotta, I gotta do the math. I gotta, there's probably some other huge heroes. There's also a bird factor. If this was a dog, it's very easy to say the dog's a hero, but if birds are not lovable. If this was a dog, this would be the most fucking well-known dog in the Spielberg history of the United States. Spielberg would make a movie, States. like War Horse, he would make a movie, War Pigeon, or whatever. I mean, I, I'm starting to realize why there's so many pigeons in New York. Because all the, like, nostalgic war people never had the heart to be like, hey, we need to get rid of the pigeons. I Googled top heroes of World War One. Charles Whittle- Whittleson is there. I mean, Maybe they're giving him the credit. Shit. Yeah. We don't even know how to say seems, his name. We it seems, say name. seems like Cherami should be in that spot. I'll seems, give you that. Seems like your battalion was trapped. <laughs> <laughs> a bird saved your life. That's... <laughs> That's a fair reaction. <laughs> I'll say this, and we still have more of the story to go, so we'll, we'll see what else we've missed. But, I mean, you're a history guy. This is your first time hearing of Cherami, I'm mm-hmm. assuming. Mm-hmm. I mean, from everything we have gathered so far, are you, like, disappointed you haven't heard of this bird before? No, I don't, I don't know a lot of World War I, okay. like, at all. Like, I'm not, okay. I don't, I've never That's really fine. dove down it. But, um, dude, they have, they have fucking Charles. So I'm fully with you now. Because they have Charles Whittlesey as the fourth biggest hero. And in it, they're like, he was surrounded and he launched a carrier pigeon to save the day. Dude, you launched six before that and they yeah. all died. Dead. Like, if the carrier pigeon isn't amazing, right. you're, you you're don't dead. belong on this list. Yeah. So I'm with you. I'll, okay. I'll admit I was wrong. It's okay. He's one of the I greatest just, heroes. I just didn't want you saying pigeon with a little edge like you would a normal street rat pigeon. I am survived. Like they, they like tried to make it like live. Like I think once the message gets delivered, they're kind of like put Whoa. it out of put it out of its misery. Oh, again, I'm just replace pigeon with human. And every time you talk about you're him, you're not going to get me to do that. It's still <laughs> exactly, a so, exactly. Hero, I'm giving you one of the greatest heroes. So you one. don't kill it, you save its life. I'm, it seems like not, if it was a dog, would you kill it? Well, if it was a horse, I think they would. Broken leg, blind, they put out its misery. That's because horses. Like continue to break themselves once they're broken. What so if it can't fly? Horse expert. It is funny that they just got word that they need to like change their whole artillery to save 200 lives, but they still have some resources to save the pigeon as well. Yeah, <laughs> I think each battalion had a pigeon. There was a board medic. Yeah, there was like a. Yeah, yeah. He had a board skinny medic. guy. Yeah. yeah. Then like there's like a Petey from Dumb and Dumber. Pretty bird, pretty bird. Okay. You just give it to that kid. Like here, <laughs> fix share. Hero. Or one of the biggest heroes. Yes. I don't know where we were. Army medics were able to save the life. For uh, his part. For his part in saving the 77th Division, Cher Ami was awarded the Croix de Guerre, one of France's highest military honors for its gallantry in the field. I hope they put a fucking medal around the pigeon's neck. Oh, yeah. General John Pershing, commander of the American Ex- Expeditionary Force, said, there isn't, there isn't anything the United States can do. <laughs> what? There isn't anything the United States can do too much for this bird. We might be missing a hey, word. Hey, General no, no, John Pershing, sense. speak better. There isn't anything the United Every States... Every act that we did isn't enough. There's I know, it's, I know the do. sentiment. 
the words don't. Meanwhile, make. the ringers over here ready to <laughs> put the bird out. Of there its isn't misery. anything the United States can God. do too much for this bird. Yeah, it's not great, but it's yeah. There. Army medics were able to save Cher Ami and made it back to uh, the United States in the care of its trainer, Captain John Carney. So I have him as uh, PD. On June 13th, 1919, Cher Ami died at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. However, Cher Ami's body was yes. preserved and presented to the American government with honor. It is difficult to say how many families owe their existence to the sheer courage and self-sacrifice of one brave bird. Today, Cher Ami is on display at the Smithsonian Museum of American History to preserve his memory. Since then, his story has lived on in the hearts and minds of Americans across. So they got a 100-year-old bird that I can go Google the picture of? I think so. That's wild. This is another easy movie. Um, and again, I do I love the way you're talking about Captain John Carney as the pretty bird blind kid from Dumb and Dumber? No. I will say this. John Carney has some scenes that suck for him. Yeah. He's, you know, talking to these tough military men. They did put a medal around the pigeon's neck. Obviously. Hell yeah. It's bigger than the pigeon's chest. Yes. I mean, that's America. Ain't that America? But there's some good scenes in the movie where John Carney is talking about how his job is as important as the other generals. And they're like, okay, bird boy. And then at the end of it, bird boy, like, saves that guy's saves life. Whittlesey. Yeah. Like, as they're getting lost, he's, like, having heart-to-hearts with Jeremy. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, they're going to be the one. You're going to be the one. In your mind, do the other birds in the battalion have their own trainer, and there's, like, trainer beef between which is the best pigeon? Or is he? Mm. Is this guy doing all the pigeons? I think you have trainer, bird trainer, battalion beef between the three battalions. I think each battalion has pride in their own pigeons. Okay. That's how I have it. Which so I'm trying to buy like a share a me replica pigeon statue to just put in the middle of the desk yeah. and it's not for sale. No, we should do it. Like, see this? That should be for sale. Make replicas. Hey, Smithsonian. And I'll buy it. I think that's fair. It's got one leg. That's cool. He's blind. So from 1911, I mean, what what generation or family are we on for those 193 well, dudes? Well, my nana was born in 1911. Right. So this is 1918, but similar. 1918. Well, whatever. Seven but, years. But they have to be like 20 years old then. In the area. So then the those people who were saved, say they're around 22, say three years later the war ends, or two years later they're around 24. They have kids. We're looking at f- uh, four generations. Four or five generations. Like, a gr- like if I'm alive right now, it's my great-great-grandfather. Yeah. Share me movie? Do we have one? Oh, my God. I Dude, I think I found a picture of the... Looks the, like they did an animated film, which I'm not stoked about. Dude, I think they, I, found, I, found, I found a picture of the, the PD guy. What's his name? Carney. And, like... I don't know. It kind of fits my... In my mind, it fits, like, the type of guy I have. That's a fine picture. It's kind of cooler than I thought. It looks like... Yeah. Um, what's the... The way crocodile? he's petting him. The way he's petting him. Who's the Australian guy? He's holding guy? his bird. Yeah. Been there. I forget the name of... This is bad. The Australian animal died from a stingray. Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin vibes in that. He's like an animal trainer. Don't bring up Steve Irwin, because then I will go on a Google search, and I'll start crying. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. Good see job, his, Jeremy. You see his son, though? That's what makes me cry. His family living it, up his legacy. It's beautiful. Yeah. All right. We're out. Thank you. That was just a little bitty laugh. He, 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 he. Good job, Jeremy. Good job, Jeremy. Jeremy.